Hello, it's Scott here, and I'm back on board Iona, who is where she belongs in Norwegian fjords. Yes, that's right, I am on Iona with PO Cruises. I'm back here for the first time since the maiden voyage last year. On that trip, I shot a full tour of Iona, so make sure you have a quick look at that video if you want to know all about the ship. I'll pop a link to it in the description below. I am on board to sail to the Norwegian fjords from Southampton, and we will be stopping at Stavanger, Olden, Alsund, and Haugesund. But do check where your cruise stops because there are a few other towns that open up throughout the season. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing and drop any questions you have in the comments below. Hit the like button if you're liking the video and you can also put the notifications on if you don't want to miss a video. Our Norwegian Fjords cruise sets sail from Southampton, which means the first day is a sea day, which gives you a chance to get acquainted with the ship. Now, Iona is the biggest ship to sail the UK market, so you will need some time to figure your way around, and at some point you will get lost thinking that the back is the front and the front is the back, I promise. Our first night was a black tie night, which meant we have a chance to get suited up. There's always at least one black tie night on every PO cruise. And our first evening was at my favourite restaurant, Sindhu. Sindhu is an Indian restaurant available on all P&O Cruises ships and it is extra to what you pay. But believe me when I tell you, it is one of the best dinners you will have. I was so excited to be going back there, getting dressed up and enjoying some delicious food at Sindhu on the first night on board. All right, it's our first night on board and we come to Sindhu and this is an East Indian punch. Now I'm going to come back to Iona and talk a little bit about life on board and things to do at the end of this video, but let's get stuck into the Norwegian fjords and our first stop, Stavanger. So we cruised into Stavanger on Iona, seeing Norway for the first time, which is a beautiful sight. The port in Stavanger is right there on the Old Town, and the Old Town is very pretty, very picturesque, so you can actually go for a walk from the ship without being on a shore experience. We of course were, and our first shore experience was a tour of Stavanger itself, stopping at multiple different sites and points of interest throughout the town. The first one was called the Swords in the Rock, which is a great memorial which represents the unification of Norway. So very important, very historic and linked to the Viking times. We then went for a delicious Norwegian lunch at the Lobster Hotel, which is a beautiful setting, followed by driving through the town, stopping at a few more places because this afternoon we will be taking a luxury yacht tour. Now this tour is very similar to the one you can do through the shore experiences on the P&O website. The only difference is the boat is slightly different. All right, so we have just got on board the yachts which will take us around the harbour and to the pulpit rock. This is a beauty, look at this. None of us were quite expecting this. And a fantastic view, look at that, it's a kitchen. And a great view of oh, Iona, there she is and it takes you all the way up to Pulpit Rock, that uniquely gorgeous rock out overlooking the Norwegian fjords. You can actually hike that rock as well. That's a separate tour that takes about five hours, where well, the hike itself is about three hours up and back. So look out for that tour. But we were taking a boat trip along the fjords where you can see the magnificent rocky outcrop of the Pulpit Rock from below and the tiny little people standing on the edge risking their life for that photo. Anyway, we really enjoyed this way of seeing it because you get a feel for the fjords. You get out on the water, you can see the rock above, there's a beautiful waterfall. And of course we could have a glass of champagne and just take in the fact that we are in the Norwegian fjords. So that's a great experience and I do recommend it but you can also do a few other shore experiences here in Stavanger. The other experiences I would consider, firstly, would be the Pulpit Rock hike, and the second one would be the hike to the Manafossen Waterfall. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. I'm probably not pronouncing a lot of these Norwegian names right, but I am trying. So that's it on our time in Stavanger, a great introduction to Norway. Back on board Iona, sailing away into the Norwegian fjords before our next stop, the next day, which is Olden. If there is one tip, one thing you take away from this video, it is to get up early as we arrive in Olden. This is some of the most stunning scenery I've ever seen, and it is a proper welcome to the Norwegian Fjords moment. 
The town of Olden itself is spectacularly beautiful. I have some amazing shots of me having a coffee on my balcony, which is on the aft at the back of the ship. And whether you're in an inside cabin or a balcony cabin, just get up, get outside, find your way to see the view from as early as you can manage. Uh, we arrived at around 6, 6.30, but the captain will tell you what time you're arriving with his, with his announcement the, the day before. In Olden itself, we will be doing three different shore experiences so I can show you some of the experiences that you can do on your cruise. The first one was yoga in the Blue Mountain Hall. Now I do love a bit of yoga so I was really looking forward to this one and they've built this studio and they've, they've built it as part of a boulder which fell thousands of years ago and it is a really stunning setting. Uh, it's run by a guy called Frank and his wife Johanna and Frank does the yoga session and he is a very very good teacher. Really calming, really relaxing and a really fantastic start to the day. Our second tour is to the very popular Brixdale Glacier and of course this is popular because you must try to go and see a glacier if you're in the Norwegian fjords and it is stunning. Even the walk alone up past the waterfalls and through this magnificent scenery. In fact even the drive to the glacier alone is worth it past the lakes and the fjords. Um, it's really stunning, the whole, the whole place simply stunning. You can do the glacier in two different ways. You can hike it, which takes about 45 minutes. It's not particularly difficult, but it is quite, quite uphill. Uh, or you can take the troll car up there. Uh, I think that costs a little bit more, but you'll see them both in these shore experiences on the PO website. This was my second visit to the Brixdale Glacier, and you can see from the weather we were very lucky this time. I wasn't so lucky last time, so please don't expect to always see blue skies. The weather can change a lot in the Norwegian fjords. All right, our third and final tour of the day is a rib boat tour out onto the water of the fjord to get some crayfish, which we would then bring back and eat. Well, everyone else would eat them, but I don't eat shellfish, so I won't be eating them. But we took a rib boat tour out onto the fjords. Now, if there's one thing that you need to do is somehow get out on the water to really get a sense of the scale of the Norwegian fjords because they are insanely beautiful and high and you can also get a nice view of Iona in front of Olden that sort of brilliant kind of money shot if you like of, of the fjords it's a really really great tour and you can also do the rib boat tour without the crayfish and if you just want to go on a rib boat tour so check that one out in the shore experiences another couple of brilliant options that I would like to have done if I wasn't doing these tours the first one is kayaking in the fjords honestly brilliant brilliant tour I've actually done this a few years Years ago in the fjords. The second tour I would like to do would be a helicopter sightseeing but we're actually doing a helicopter tour a little bit later so I'll come on to that one and the third one is a tour called the fjords and glaciers that one looks beautiful and stunning. So it was time sadly to leave Olden and similarly to the arrival into Olden I really recommend that you go out on top deck or to your balcony to look at the fjords as you depart Olden because that is beautiful as well. All right, on to our next stop, Olsund. This was another nice arrival and you dock right there in the town. So you've got a lot of things within walking distance in Olsund that you can go and see right from the ship. I'm very excited to say that our tour was a helicopter tour. Yes, of course, this is one of the most expensive options and it's about 250 quid, but oh my God, if you can stretch your budget to include a helicopter tour, the scenery is mind blowing. We took off and went right around Iona and had a good look, mainly because we needed to get some photography of Iona and then we headed off into the mountains into the fjords with views over the fjords and lakes and mountains and just mind-blowing scenery we went really close it's pretty it's pretty scary it's pretty feels a bit sketchy at some point you're getting quite close in the movement but it's all obviously completely safe with a very experienced uh, helicopter pilot but just flying a heli being a helicopter is amazing full stop but going over the Norwegian fjords that's that is a bucket list opportunity so so have a look at some of this footage and if you can do that uh, do stretch through it and have a look at the video of when I when I got off the helicopter to see how I felt there's a big smile on my face just talking about it now that was really really one of the highlights of this trip so far and then after our helicopter tour we actually took a hike up to the viewpoint you can see at the top of the hill there's a viewpoint and it's a nice windy sort of stepped route up uh, only takes about 30 minutes it's quite steep but it's a really nice view so I do recommend you that but if you do don't make the mistake that I did I went up in the afternoon the morning light is better for photographs there's a little tip the other options if I wasn't doing these tours I would love to do the hiking of Sugarlump Mountain that's a really famous mountain just close to Olsund that one looks really nice there's a cable car viewpoint if it's open and you can also do a cruise option around the fjords we can take a boat trip around the fjords from Olsund 
And on to our final stop, which was Halgersund. And again, you actually stop quite close to the centre. I would say it's about a five to ten minute walk. You can walk to part of the, the fjords, which looks like a river and some nice restaurants along where we went for lunch later. But the first thing we did was get back on another rib boat tour. This one was going to be a little bit longer and go further out to explore the island and explore, explore some of the area around Holgersen. We went to a place called Hoiva, which I'm definitely not pronouncing right and I definitely didn't in my Instagram stories. But we jumped off the boat, we had a little walk around and got a feel for some of these tiny little island communities that get hammered by the weather in the winter and a little bit cut off, in fact very cut off at times. But probably the highlight of this rib boat tour, and we were very lucky to see it, was seeing a sea eagle. Um, apparently one in five times the, the captain told us that they, he sees a sea eagle, so we were really lucky to capture it and capture it flying away. That was a beautiful moment, very lucky, very thankful. And then following that, we went back to that little part of the river that I said and had lunch. Now I really recommend this restaurant. It's difficult when the food's included on board a ship to go out and eat, but this place was really nice and it was called the Terra to Loth, and I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right, but the food was amazing. We had some traditional Norwegian food spread out. Everybody really enjoyed it. They had fantastic burgers there as well. So everybody uh, gave that restaurant a thumbs up. So that's a little recommendation for you. Then we finished our day with a tour around the town. We had a guide. She was telling us about a few of the famous sites in the area before heading back to the ship. And if I wasn't doing these tours, I would take the tour to the two waterfalls, which I'm not going to try and pronounce, but you'll see that on these shore experiences. That looks fantastic. That looks like a really proper good day out. So there you have it. We are back on board after exploring Haugesund. All right, time to talk about Iona. You'll be back on board each evening exploring the amazing restaurants, the entertainment, the drinks, the music. Um, I've got a lot of love for this ship and I have explained a lot of this in the tour. Again, I'll link to it in the description below in my tour of Iona. I'm gonna to touch on a few different things. The food here is the highlight, honestly. Some of the food you eat here is amazing, especially the restaurants like Sindhu, like the Beach House, but also just in the buffet. Or oh, people forget that there's two restaurants, more than two restaurants that are included for free, which are a waiter service. Uh, that food is also incredible. Then you have the entertainment from the live music you get in many venues around the ship. I love the 710 Club, but it gets really busy. I've got to warn you again, the 710 Club is great, but it gets busy. Then you've got the theatre and performances like Festival. Uh, then you have the Skydome performances and the fantastic aerialists or the live music that you get in the Skydome. Honestly, what a great multi-purpose venue on board a cruise ship. And finally, there's actually a cinema, which is a really nice way to chill out. And they have some really good films. Sit and watch James Bond and relax for the evening in a cinema on board. But also take a moment to explore the ship and take in the decor and the fact that they bring so much light in. There's not a moment on a owner where you feel claustrophobic. The grand atrium is three floors high with glass to ceiling floors. That's a great spot. I mean, imagine the weather's bad. You can still sit there, have your coffee and admire the fjords passing by. That's incredible. And then moving on to the cabins, I had a lovely balcony cabin with a bit of extra space overlooking the aft, the rear of the ship. But even the inside cabins are very spacious. I do always recommend having a balcony, especially if you're going to be cruising past the Norwegian fjords. Of course, it's extra, so it is a cost but I really recommend having a balcony if you can stretch to it. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to get up really early and get up on top deck, which is fine too. But yeah, I have a lovely room to I'll give you a little room tour and you can see what you think of this really nice spacious room. Other than that, I really hope you found this video a useful insight into the Norwegian Fjords cruise on Iona with P&O Cruises. I've had an incredible week, honestly. Some really amazing highlights from Olden to the helicopter flight and then everything on board Iona. I love to go on a cruise, waking up in a different destination every day. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know if you've got any questions, any comments, pop them in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up if you've been enjoying it. I hope you will be on a P&O Cruises tour on Iona to the Norwegian field sometime soon. Other than that, thanks for watching and happy travels.